Hello, ladies and gents. Today, we are looking at the close read of Ship of Fools. This is our first time looking at it. We are going to look at it again in close read tomorrow and excerpt from it. The following essential questions are what we're going to focus on as we do this close read. Essential question number four, what is informational text really about? Number five, how does interaction with text provoke thinking and response? And number seven, how does a reader's purpose influence how they should read the text? Remember, when we close read, we're reading through the text three times. First, for what the text says. Second, for how the text says it. And lastly, for why the text matters. As you read through these, this excerpt from Ship of Fools, for the first reading, Please focus on what's happening in the text. Read in the text and then think about what's happening in each paragraph because each paragraph should be included in your summary. Then answer the question, what's happening in these paragraphs and write your summary as your answer for this first phase. As you do this first phase of reading, we are focusing on learning target number five to create an objective summary of the text. As we create an objective summary of the, uh, the text, we are making a brief restatement of the most important points at the beginning, middle, and end of the text without adding, adding any personal opinions. Please only include the facts. Don't include evidence. Don't include personal opinions. A summary is in your own words, and it's a brief restatement of what this excerpt of the text is about. By doing that, you will have completed your first phase of reading. In the second phase of reading, you will be rereading the text for how the text says it. First step is to read through it one more time here. After you reread that entire section, make sure as you're reading it, you're focusing on how the text says it. Look for words that you believe create a strong impact on the tone of the piece. And then you'll answer the question, what impact do these specific words have on the tone of the editorial? Is the tone positive, negative, or neutral? And what's an adjective you would use to specifically describe that attitude, describe that tone? I'd highly recommend of opening up a Google search for tone words because you can find a tone word chart looking for positive, negative, or neutral tone words and find a word from a tone word chart to use for a specific adjective on the tone when you answer this question. As we read through this question, we will be focusing on learning target. I think it's number 23. I got a little bit of scrolling down here to do to get to it. Here we go. Yep. Learning target number 23 to analyze the impact of a specific word choice on tone. So what does that mean? That means we're looking closely at how the author is using specific words in this piece to make and showcase their attitude within the words that they use. So this has nothing to do with the reader and everything to do with the author. What is the author's attitude in those particular words used in the text? So the word has a feeling and that feeling is how the author feels, the author's attitude when they are saying that. It's that voice coming off the page. Some of the questions you'll see is, what impact does the word choice in the sentence have on the tone? And as I said in that question, use a fancy adjective to describe that tone. Look up in Google, tone word chart. You can find positive and negative neutral tone words. Don't just say it's positive or negative or neutral. Find a specific adjective to really um, describe that tone that attitude of the author you hear coming off the page. Remember, tone can change throughout a selection, so you may see different tones used even just within this section. And that'll finish off phase two. In phase three, you'll be rereading the text for why the text matter, matters that last time. As you reread the text this final time, you're gonna be incorporating text evidence within this response. This is the first phase I'm requiring you to use in a full text evidence. Obviously in phase two, it'd be nice to see you explain some of those words you thought created a tone, but in phase three, I'm looking for a full evidence from that passage. So in phase three, you're gonna reread the text and this time focus on why the text matters. Look at key sentences that you mentioned from that phase two of tone and decide how some of those tone sentences actually help to reinforce a clear purpose for the text. So after looking at that, how does the tone help the reader determine the author's purpose in writing the passage?
So as you reread it, think about what is the author's purpose and how does the tone that you've discovered in this section really help to showcase that purpose? You want to begin your sentence with one of the following. The author's main purpose in writing this article is to, and then pick one, explain, compare, describe, promote, inform, and then finish that off. Explain about what, compare about what, describe what, promote what, inform what. Not every answer is the correct answer, so expect feedback from me if you pick the wrong choice within these options, because this is clearly a specific purpose, so you need to make sure you're picking the correct option. After you finish off that sentence, I want you to actually follow that with your quoted evidence, and then give an explanation for how that quoted evidence actually showcases the tone, and then also connects to that author's purpose statement that you made and picked to begin your response to this one. So you're gonna not just focus on what the purpose is, you should provide evidence that shows a tone and then also showcase how that tone helped you determine what the purpose is. As you read this, or as you complete this last final section, you'll be focusing in on learning target number, and I gotta scroll back up, so bear with me here. Number eight, to determine an author's purpose, the why behind the text. What is the author's reason, intentions, or goal for writing Ship of Fools? What is their reason, intention, or goal? There's many different kinds of purposes. It could be to explain something, to compare things, to describe something, to urge, which is more of that persuasive kind of tone, to promote, which again is more of that biased, persuasive kind of tone. It could be to inform, or it could be to argue, which argumentation is sort of, you know, on that side of more persuasion, but it's slightly different. And we'll come to learn more about that argumentation later on. But um, go ahead and think about Using the tone, how do we see an author's purpose showcased through that tone? And once you do that, you'll be done with this close reading and can take some time to work on your independent reading goal. So go ahead and work on this close read of this excerpt from Ship of Fools.